Hello my crafty friends. Today I am sharing kind of a fun project with you. Every year December 1st is the start of Christmas for our family and it has been it's something that my mom started with my brother and I when we were tiny and we have just continued that but what we do on December 1st has changed and evolved throughout the years. I started when my first grandchild, Olivia, was born. December 1st became an opportunity for me to give her a Christmas book and Christmas pajamas. So when you get Christmas pajamas on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day, you know, they're already passe. So this way she could wear her Christmas pajamas all through December. And, and it was a nice photo op on Christmas morning. She always had nice Christmas pajamas for Christmas morning and I know her mom really liked that and I've continued it with all five grandkids. Now two of our grandkids are Jewish and so they get just nice new winter pajamas but they still get they get a Hanukkah book and winter pajamas and they love my handmade cards. I'm, I'm so lucky that my grandkids love handmade cards but this year instead of handmade cards I made these little hot chocolate pouches for them and I have white gift bags to put their new pajamas in and these are going to be attached with a ribbon to the white gift bag and just hang from it. I will add a tag with their names and that will be their decoration. So I wanted to share how I made these really cute and and easy hot chocolate pouches. It's not my idea. They've been around for a long time but I was poking around YouTube one evening and I saw a video from Bourbon Creek Crafts and she had done them last year I believe. As soon as I heard what she had used for the pouch I was like okay I gotta go make these. So that's how this idea was born and it's basically half of a number 10 business envelope. So here's your business envelope. You seal it. So these ones have got a self-adhesive seal on it, but you can use glue or an, 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 any kind of adhesive you would prefer and seal your envelope. Then you cut it in half. <laughs> There's your pouch. That's it. How fun is that? And then I added some pattern paper from my stash. So Miss Olivia loves unicorns. She has a degenerative disease called pulmonary hypertension and it's a rare disease anyhow but it's extremely rare in children. There's a very small community of, of children who suffer from this and we're grateful for every day we have with her and she loves unicorns. Because this disease is so rare medication is tricky and dosage is tricky and Olivia never reacts the way they kind of expect her to react so even her cardiologist calls her a unicorn so anything with unicorns on it is always appropriate for Olivia and she is very much a girly girl with her pink so this pattern paper from Recollections did have mermaids and and unicorns and it's Christmas and so I thought perfect I got that out and I just cut it a quarter inch smaller now I'm not going to give you measurements for the panels because it will depend on your business envelope uh, some people cut them down to four inches to make their measuring easier I think this was I think my paper was a four inch width and maybe four and an eighth inch high but you can play with it and see what you feel like and I decorated the front and the back as well with the same size pattern paper after I had adhered it and I didn't glue it all over because the pouches are not that thick so I really did just go around the outer edge and then I used this as a three quarter inch circle punch so I did a, a punch here um, you know what it's really not necessary they can reach in and pull out their goodies but it was fun to do. So then I went stash diving in my Christmas embellishment bin and I have if I cut a label or a circle for a project and it's not used I put those in a little bin as well. So I just went through all of that. This felt sticker was the last one on the sheet. There was no packaging on it but it, the colors matched so perfectly. This label I believe is a Catherine label from Karen Berniston and it had been die cut out of this pretty pink paper obviously not used for whatever but it matched so I added it and this joy banner I don't even know how old this joy banner is it was cricket cut like 10 years ago maybe and I probably did also cut the letters but they're long gone but it was sitting in the embellishment bin and I thought this was a perfect opportunity to use it so I added that with some glitter and then some little snowflakes from Stampin' Up! 
little bit of glitter on the felt flower and that's Olivia's. Now next grandson is Ethan. So this was a chipboard sticker, a black circle from my stash and I just really adhered them on the top and bottom because I wanted room for my pouch. If everything is stuck down really well there's not a whole lot of give left in the pouch. This chipboard sticker got um, some glitter glue on it. I know there's pink on the back of that and Ethan is probably going to notice that <laughs> but I made the front really blue <laughs> so he'll be okay but he will notice that there's pink on the back of his. Next grandson is Zachary and he, he has a little Santa, another black circle from my stash. And then for the, the two that celebrate Hanukkah, Eli will get this one with the Christmas elf and gift. I take some liberties with the whole thing because I'm not Jewish and the kids get to celebrate Christmas with us as well. So I try not to make anything overtly Christmas as in Santa's and well probably the elf is overtly Christmas and he is red and green. But I do make an effort not to make it in your face Christmassy while still being part of our holiday. So these two got the same, the same little chipboard elves and these chipboard elements I've had for a couple of years so you know it was fun to use them up and again all of the labels and stuff were in those bins so I didn't have to cut anything for those. Inside is hot chocolate and a candy cane and then some some chocolates and I didn't wrap the chocolates because really the kids just want to rip them open and eat them. I did just put a one by one and a half I believe inch square of the pattern paper on their chocolates. Now I don't show a lot of my treat holders. I do make a lot of treat holders over the holidays. Um, so this is one I wanted to share and this one is for a neighbor and they have three kids so there's five little chocolates for them. These are Swiss chocolates. Where I am in Alberta, Canada it is very hard to find Hershey's nuggets and getting out to the stores hunting for them during COVID is not something I'm willing to do. So these are Swiss milk chocolate. They're a very nice chocolate and I cut a one by four inch strip of pattern paper, add a little bit of adhesive to one end and then just wrap them and then I bought some these are two by 10 inch cello bags from amazon.ca and the, they work really nicely. They just slide in. In the end, I decided to add in a little cardstock uh, strip just to keep them a little more sturdy, but this will be attached to our neighbor's Christmas card and it's retired pattern paper from Stampin' Up! with copper foiling. The chocolates are wrapped with gold foil. This Christmas tree was die cut using a retired Stampin' Up! die set and cut it from white pearl cardstock and then added some peel off snowflake stickers to it in the gold. So these are the chocolates that are inside the treat holders but you can see I for the kids I just added a square on the front. If they're wrapped just as more more work for them as they're trying to rip into them and get them eaten. So I have done a number of these decorated all different. Again I went to stash diving and I had some fun stickers. Most of them are in this orientation and most of them have six chocolates in them. I didn't want to give a family of five six chocolates and have the kids fight over one extra one. It just made more sense for them to do five and this strip of pattern paper that was left over was in this orientation. So that's why this is horizontal. But my other treat holders um, are in this orientation including some with these with this deer print and I've added gold foil labels and they're just so much fun to decorate and especially if you've got a bunch of leftover embellishments and things from other years you can just go stash diving and they fit so nicely inside these cello bags. So that is it for me today. Not a December 1st card for my grandkids but I think they're going to love them and they're not going to be disappointed they didn't get a card this year. If you enjoyed my video today please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to see more. And that's it for me today.